Hey friends, how are you? It's Gina Grad from The Brian and Gina Show, the official podcast of Los Angeles Magazine. And I just wanted to come on here and share something kind of personal with you because I get reached out to a lot by a lot of women and I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about because anyone who knows me knows my life is an open book and if you don't like too much information, then you should probably turn this off now. Are they gone? So coming up in just a couple weeks is my one year anniversary from my breast reduction surgery that I was really, really excited, but really, really nervous to get. I have been thinking about doing this for many years, Um, you know, going back and forth between, you know, well, this is my body and this is what it looks like and I should embrace it and all of its obstacles, I won't say flaws because I don't believe that, but you know, all of its challenges. Um, You know, this is who I am and this is the body I was given and I should love it and I should accept it and all of that. Um, But this was a lot. (laughs) This was a lot. This was a lot of extra physical and emotional baggage that I had been carrying around for many years. And so I will answer some of the questions off the top of my head that I have been asked by women. And if you're not a woman, perhaps you know a woman who would find this interesting or you might find this interesting yourself. Um, I don't know if I need to put a warning on this because I haven't thought about everything I'm going to say yet. But let's just go ahead and preface this by saying that if you're easily grossed out, this is probably not the video for you. (laughs) So at the very least, put the meal down before you listen. um, And I'll try to answer the questions that have that have uh, come up for me. So the first question I usually get is, is it expensive? And how much does insurance cover? The answer to that is yes. And it depends. Um, it, it depends. It depends on your insurance company and what you're carrying around. And, and it, there's a scale. I can't remember what it's called, but it's this like stupid, like, like sliding scale that every plastic surgeon I met with said is ridiculous and nonsense and hates to use it because it's basically a way for insurance companies to like get out of paying, but it's like you have to have this to this ratio. And, you know, if if a doctor's looking at you and said, oh, my God, yes, yes, you really need need to do this, it would benefit you greatly. Now it's everybody's next mission to convince the insurance company that this is medically necessary and that you you really do need it. And it's not just, you know, a cosmetic procedure, Um, because, you know, as they say, if you're putting in more, it's cosmetic. But if you're taking out more, eh. Maybe you need it. So I was very lucky. Um, My insurance approved it pretty swiftly. And any of you who have seen me uh, pre a year ago might not be surprised to hear that. Um, And I won't be putting up any pictures or maybe I will. I don't know. I'm just talking all this out in live time. So let's see what happens. Um, But my insurance company did cover a lot of it, but it was, I was still left with a hefty bill. So uh, I haven't always been in a position time or money wise to do something like this, but it was, it was time. Um, I, I had the time in that I took the time, which I am not known for. So at that time, I was working uh, my eighth, no, my seventh year at the Adam Carolla show, eighth, seventh. And I told the guys, like, listen, I'm going to do this and I need to take the rest of the week off. And they were incredible about it. They were really supportive. They totally understood. And it was not a problem. So I was really lucky. I haven't always been in a job or felt like I was in a place in a job where, you know, I could take the time off I needed for myself, especially to recover. And I was just really grateful for that. Um So that's the money part. Um, How small can you go? That's another question that I got asked a bunch. And what I learned from my consultations, I went to three, um, is that you can only go so small before you run the risk of losing your nipple. Because the way it was explained to me, have I mentioned I'm not a doctor? This is just what I learned at my consults, that you have um, like blood vessels that are attached to your nipple and that you're going to lose like one of them to 
make a smaller size. And if you want to go smaller, 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 you might not be able to continue having blood flow to your nipple. So that's something that uh, you have to talk about with your doctor. In fact, I would have loved to go like a teeny bit smaller, but this was the um, amount that was safe for me. And I'm very happy with it. Um, What else? I know there's a lot of medical questions. Something that I was warned about, and I've discussed this before, um, but something that I was warned about that you can never get enough warning so anytime someone reaches out to me and said like says they're going to have their surgery, I I make a big deal about this because if it happens, then you know what to expect, and if it doesn't, then you just got really lucky, and that's just another blessing you can count. Um, wound openings are very very normal, from what I understand, um, and very common, and they happen to me. They happen to me in a major way. So think of it this way. Paper doesn't really work because it's not stretchy, but let's just pretend, for lack of a better analogy off the top of my head, um, that your skin in this area, your skin is already thin because it's skin. Now you have skin that's been stretched over time because your breasts grow and the skin stretches. So now we're working with very, very thin skin. Now let's take that paper thin skin and sew it up. Like you're sewing, like you're darning a sock with a needle and thread. Well, that skin is pretty fragile. And when you're sewn shut, sometimes your skin goes, no, thank you. Nope, can't do it. Not strong enough. And it creates wound openings. I had pretty bad ones. Um, I mean, compared to what? That's the question. But they were pretty significant. I learned what debriding is because of it and learned how to do it myself, which makes me think if I can do that, I can do anything. Google it. But the wounds were very normal and they all healed beautifully. But um, I definitely had to be careful for three months. Uh, Certainly no pools. And this was the dead heat of a California summer. No pools, no ponds, no anything with bacteria in it because you have you have open wounds. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that I noticed, and again, I'm not a doctor and I could be wrong, but these are just things I noticed personally. Um, when when you're fresh out of surgery and before the wound openings, before everything, and like the, the anesthesia is still wearing off and whatever, you rest it really high, like a fembot, like from like from Austin Powers, like they're really high and like your, my chest was like so tight. Not like, not like my breathing was tight, but just physically it was like, there was, there is a tightness in here that I can't quite put my finger on, but like, ah, like everything, like you feel better with the bandages on and just being pressed because when you take them off, something doesn't feel right. That's because from what I understand, um, I was, sutured, you know, from the inside. So, um, you know, you're stitched up on the inside with stitches that end up dissolving. So I was still really, really tight and really stitched up, but those eventually dissolve and everything sort of eventually relaxes and falls into a more natural place. However, another question I am often asked is, um, is it just a reduction or do you also get a lift? I am happy to report that in my case, you also get a lift. I would imagine in most cases you get a lift because that's not really fair to take it out and then leave it down where it was. That's not, that's not cool. If you're going to do this, just double check with your plastic surgeon that a lift will also be involved in this procedure, which frankly is, is, is a lot of fun. (laughs) When I'm wearing, you know, backless stuff and, and just, just living in this sort of newly altered body that I'm, I'm really, I'm really having a good time with. Um, one thing I was really worried about was that I wouldn't feel like myself and that my body wouldn't feel like my body. And how was I going to come to terms with that? And what was that going to feel like? And what if I couldn't handle it? What if I couldn't live with, with 
looking down and not seeing the body that I thought I was supposed to see. I am very happy to report that that has not happened. And if that's something you're worried about, maybe you'll have a very different experience. But hopefully this is something that you can relate to. This is still my body. This is still my body. These are my breasts. (laughs) There was, this is me. So, you know, is my hair still my hair if I get a haircut? Is my hair still my hair if I get a pixie cut? It's still my hair. We're just, we just, we just took a little off the top. So I don't feel like that. I feel great. Um, There is something that you can get um, after your surgery that they call a dog ear, a dog tag, a dog ear, I think. It's when you have this little pinch of skin on the side that's still pointed. Um, That was an easy fix. I did that in office. They numbed me up, didn't feel a thing, left a little Band-Aid on for a couple weeks and and it disappeared. That was not a big deal. Um, What else have people asked me? Yeah, recovery for me was rough because again, it took It took a long time to deal with the wound openings, but something that was suggested to me and I was like, oh God, like just another money suck and this is all hokum. It's not. And I, I'm glad I did it. Um, and I, I guess I would recommend it. I was told to do as many sessions as I could, but I ended up doing five sessions in a hyperbaric chamber. What is that? It's basically a tank that you get in, or this was my experience. I know there, there's different setups. There's ones that like roll you in, like you're on a slab and you're in like a clear tube. I have a friend who did the kind where you like sit in a room with other people with like a helmet on. There's all different kinds. The kind I did was you crawl inside this tank that like it's tall enough where I could stand up like on my knees. And um, it could easily fit two people, no problem. And it's pressurized. And I always thought it felt like you were going like up, like in an airplane. No, no, no. It feels like you're going down, 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 down through through the deep, the deep blue sea. And as the tank pressurizes, you get a little, or I got a little anxious and I, I wanted to stop, but I'm so glad I didn't because hyperbaric chambers are apparently really good for uh, wound healing and um, and cell regeneration. So I got really used to it. It was no big deal. They would put on, they would put an iPad up to the hole, like the, you got like a little portal. And I would watch Schitt's Creek through the portal with a little mini speaker inside the tank and the iPad outside the tank because you can't have any electric, electricity stuff except I guess the speaker and I was fine. Um, no elastics, no makeup, no hair product. I had to I clean everything off, just go it, no no cream on your skin, nothing. Because I don't think, I'm imagining the odds of this aren't very high, but what they say is that everything's flammable, especially when you're doing a hyperbaric chamber and how it mixes with oxygen. And I don't know, it's way above my pay grade. I'm sure I could Google it, but you have to go in essentially as God made you, <laughs> but with a, a cotton t-shirt and cotton shorts. Um, and it, it ended up being pretty easy. You know, it, it's not comfortable, but they do make it as comfortable as possible. I had a little pillow and a little blanket and they say a lot of people fall asleep. I was never able to do that, but I did watch multiple seasons of Shit's Creek and it was, it was pretty easy. What else? Um, God, there are questions. I, I do get questions, and I had questions beforehand about if they take your nipples off. That varies, I think, from operation to operation. So it depends on what you need done and how much you need done. Um, but I know that that can be the case. It's called a free nipple graft. Um, God, that's all I can think of. I didn't stay overnight. Sometimes, you know, if you do it at a hospital, they'll keep you overnight just to watch you. I didn't. I just was went to the surgery center and I was out cold. I was I cried the entire time they were putting me out because I hate needles. Who doesn't? And they couldn't find a vein. And it was really upsetting. And the last thing I remember is them saying, we're going to have to go into her wrist. I did not like that. And I fell asleep crying and I woke up Um I woke up because the the nurse woke me up and I just started 
like screaming is not the right word, but forcefully in my like groggy state, be like, I have to be, I have to be. And I remember this. I don't know how I remember that because I don't remember a lot from that week because I had, you know, you still have this anesthesia coursing through your veins and a couple of painkillers, though it really wasn't that painful. Oh, that was the other thing. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And they kept saying, Gina, you don't have to pee. We promise you had a catheter in for like six hours. You don't have to pee. And there was no... There was no getting around this, right? <laughs> they were right. This is probably pain from the catheter. Did I mention that this was going to be a lot of personal information? Um, the pain level. I was very lucky. I really didn't find it to be that painful. I was just really sore. And I think, you know, we all know the difference between a stabbing pain and just soreness. It's just sore. You know, it switch off with some Advil and some Tylenol. And it was very manageable. The pain was very manageable for me. Um... I also, they, I had like these little vacuums stuck to me for a week that I had to wear this like giant machine around my neck and I was all bound up and I had all this stuff and I had to wear this machine that would be like, and I think that is to stimulate blood flow to your nipples so you don't lose them, um, which worked out well. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'm always pretty open about talking about this. And again, I thought I'd do it in a public way because I get so many questions and you're always welcome to reach out to me on Twitter. It's just Gina Grad. Um, I am always happy to have a respectful, supportive conversation and, uh, yeah, happy to be of service. So if you like this content, even when it's a little too much personal information, I hope that you like this video and subscribe to LA Magazine's channel right here on YouTube and that you listen and subscribe to The Brian and Gina Show that you can hear anywhere your ears find podcasts. Uh, we do it twice a week. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes it gets too personal. Sometimes it's just a, a show that you can actually listen to with your family. And we appreciate your support. And thank you for letting me share my story. Can't wait to talk again soon. Bye.